Hi, this is Ralph, and I want to continue where I left off in my last video. We're making a navigation menu that's going to indicate the active link for a particular page. Uh, I've got an unordered list that's been made to look somewhat like a navigation menu, so I want to finish off with that. Let me jump back over to my CSS here. So currently my navigation menu has background color, margin width, list style type none to get rid of the bullets. And I went ahead and I put a little bit of a border on my unordered list items, okay, my list items there really just for temporary sakes. Uh, let's go ahead and fix a few things. I'm going to go ahead and format all of the anchors within my list items. So we have another uh, contextual selector. Uh, the anchors within my list items within my unordered list nav menu identified with the ID attribute. I want to go ahead and format these things. If you notice on my current page, if I want to click on one of these items I literally have to put my pointer over the text, and I don't want that. I want to be able to put my pointer anywhere within this rectangular button shape. So let's go ahead and fix this. The key to that is making the um, anchor tags display as block elements. Okay, So I'm going to do block elements, and I'm also going to set their width and their heights. So I'm going to set the width of my block elements to, I'll try 180 pixels, and I'm going to set their heights to um, how about uh, let's try 30 pixels let's see how that looks and so we can really see how things are going here I want to be able to um, really I want to visualize them so I'm going to put a border on my anchor tags and I'm going to get rid of the border off of my list items okay so I'm going to go ahead and delete the border off of my list items and I'll come down here and I'm going to do a border let's see I'll do uh, five pixels outset and let's see how about um, oh, where's the pound sign there it is outset and I'll just pick a I'll pick another shade of red so I'll do F00 okay let's see how this is looking all right so these are my buttons notice that I can now put my pointer anywhere within the red border to really see to get that hyperlink action I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of more mar a little more margin in between my buttons so they separate themselves. And I also want to get my text to center nicely in the button center horizontally and vertically. So let me jump back over here. And since my anchor tags are blocks, I can easily add a little bit more margin on them. How about, uh, in fact, technically I could take the margin out of my list items. Actually, I'll leave that on there. So instead of putting margin on my list on my anchor tags, I'll just increase the margin of my list items. How about about five pixels? There we go. That's looking a little bit better. And but then I will use my anchor tags, and I'm going to do uh, text align center. Okay, that'll get the text horizontally centered. Now for vertical center, I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, line height and I'm going to set a line height that's equivalent to the height of the block anchor element which is 30 pixels so I'll put a 30 px in there and I'm also going to do a text decoration none to get rid of the underlining of the hyperlink so I'll go ahead and save that and let's see what we have now there we go so this is my my menu and I can click anywhere in those buttons so this is the basic conversion of an unordered list into a vertical navigation menu Okay, so now I just need to control how my buttons look on a hover state and then how they look when you're actively on a page. For instance, when I'm on my page three store, I want the store button to stay highlighted so we have a visual indicator in the menu that that's the page that I'm on. So back over to the style sheet and let's start to make a few changes here. I'm gonna create a new rule and I'm gonna start off, this will be pretty easy here. I'm gonna go ahead and control the hover state of, of anchor tags within list items within my menu. Okay, So just to make this really easy and really stand out, how about if I go ahead and do a, a background color that is, um, how about, the, let's see how all white looks. There we go, so we get a little bit of change from a pale yellow to a white. So now I've got a hover state for all of my menu items, and they should all work on every page. So if I go to my blog, we still get that, home, and account. So things are looking good there. 
Now I want to control how these menu items look when somebody actually is active on a particular page. And for that, we're going to use a combination of selectors. We're going to be using a group selector and contextual selectors. And the selector portion of the CSS rule is going to end up being quite long. And I might as well start off with my home page. The other key to this working successfully is that remember we have unique IDs in each of the body tags for the pages. So I've got page one ID in my body for page one, ID equals page two in the body for page two, and so on. Which means that there is only going to be one occurrence of an ID of link one within an ID of page one, and that's on my home page. So let's kind of check this out on the style sheet. If I have, let's say, body pound sign page one space list item pound sign link one. Okay, let's start off with this one here. If somebody is on my page one, then I want my link one to look differently. In particular, I want the anchor tag within the link one. So here's what I have. My anchor tag within list item link one that's within the body page one. I want that to look a little bit different. How about a background color of yellow? And let's also do a border kind of change here. How about border? five pixels inset before I had an outset. And let's change this to, uh, I'll keep it red for now. Let's see how it looks still in red. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. Let's jump over to the web page and check it out. Now if I refresh here, we don't really notice a change because I'm on page four. But let's see how page one, my home page, looks. There we go. So my home page that I'm currently active on has this yellow background and the slightly shifted border. So this is the key to keeping your active menu item indicated to whoever's visiting your web page. Now I'm going to kind of repeat this process for my other menu item. So this is back on the style sheet. And instead of making new rules for all of these, I'm actually going to be making a grouped selector now. So this is how we can get it to work for one menu option. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get it to work for the other menu options. I'm going to copy what I have. I'm going to paste this four more times. There we go. So I've just pasted it right across. It's going all the way across the page here. And I'm going to go ahead and make some changes here. This is link two within page two, link three within page three, link four within page four, link five within page five. And I must have gotten a little excited with my pasting because I've got one extra. So let me go ahead and get rid of this last one. There we go. So let's make sure I've got uh, one, two, three, four, and five. I think that takes care of all of them. Let me go ahead and save this. Jump over to my browser and refresh. And let's check out the other pages. There's my blog, my store, my account, my contact page, store, home, blog, account. Excellent. So now we are indicating visually the active link on a particular page.